Hey guys, today I want to talk about drafting. Um, I find that the question, how do I draft, is it, it's really common in the subreddit as well as it's really common in this, uh, this thing in general. And I find that while the best advice that's usually given is uh, just practice drafting, you'll get better at it, do unranked until you're ready to do ranked, that's all good. And while drafting is something that you definitely get better at the more you do it, there is a little bit of a trick and there's a pattern that a lot of the pro players use to make sure that they're drafting well. And a lot of the coaches know this, but many of the players are about iffy on when you're supposed to do what and how you're supposed to draft. So if you're in a team league and you get a pick and whatever order you want to, this is awesome. If not, if you've got a wide hero pool and you want to abuse the best time to draft who, this is the guide to show you how to do it. So the first thing to look at when you're drafting is, are you the person who's going to be banning, right? And this is shown by this little gold icon right here. If you're the person that's going to be banning, you have two things that are really important. You get to ban a hero before anyone picks a hero, as well as halfway through the game, you get to ban a hero again. These are two very important things that you need to worry about. The first thing that you should be banning is you should be focusing on banning whoever is strong in your level range. So let's say, for example, you are playing at Masters Diamond and Platinum and you want to pick someone, you want to ban someone who is overpowered so that the enemies cannot get it. Otherwise, if you, if you have first pick, what you can do, which first pick is also the same person who bans first. If you have first pick, what you can do is you can ban someone random as long as you're the whoever has first pick can play whoever's strong in the meta right now. For example, I think Sony is one of the strongest people as of the current patch. She's getting nerfed as well as Thrall, so we'll see. But I still think she's one of the strongest people in the meta. So if you want to pick Sony on your team and one of your players has first pick, you can type in chat, can you Sonya? And if they say yes, you can ban Maiev or whoever the flavor of the month ban is at the time. They'll likely ban Thrall and you get Sonya. So Communication helps with that. If you don't want to communicate, you just want to ban who's strong, you ban whoever's commonly banned in your rank, or you ban whoever is really strong in your rank, who's picked a lot. In this case, Sonya's picked 50% of the games with a 57% win rate. She is a, something to be reckoned with, right? But let's say you're in a different rank. Let's say, for example, you're in gold, silver, and bronze, or somewhere in between there. Look at who's picked a lot, who has a high win rate, Lili. Sounds weird, but she's an easy healer that can land all of her hits. If you can stop the enemies from getting a Lili, you might actually win the game. Maiev, she's played in half the games and it's a pretty strong win rate compared to everyone else. She's the sixth highest win rate with a high popularity. Maiev should be getting banned right now. Butcher, same thing. So you should always be looking at who are strong picks that you don't want to see on the other team. So that's how you should be banning all the time. Um whenever your ban phase for the first ban. The second ban is different. You want to see what the enemies have before you ban. For example, <clears throat> let's say that the enemies have already picked their tank, their off tank, and a damage. You should be focusing on banning the support so that you give them less choices to support. And you should be looking for bans like if they have a Genji, Genji is very strong with Uther because a Dragon Blade and a Divine Shield is three seconds of hell. So you don't want that. So you should be looking to ban things that synergize well with their team or just supports because there's not a lot of support picks anymore. So if you can ban their supports, they have less choices in the game. So that's how you should be focusing on banning if you're the ban person. That's the first thing that you focus on in the draft. The next thing that you want to focus on in the draft, let me remove these really quick, is these first two picks. These first two picks are some of the most important picks that you should do. Firstly, if there's any hero that's broken right now, you want to pick it if it wasn't banned, just so that the enemies don't get it. Think of, the <clears throat> think of picking as its own sort of ban, as if you're not that great at someone, but if you're great at someone, then you want to abuse the reason why the hero is really strong at the time. The next thing that you want to be picking for, and this is extremely, extremely important, you should be picking for the map. <laughs> and what I mean by that is when the game starts, the map is going to show up, um, the map's going to show up up here, and it's going to say, uh, Battlefield of Eternity. And then you need to figure out 
who are the best heroes for Battlefield of Eternity? <coughs> well, while this is something that is gained with practice, and you'll know who's the best by simply playing, what I recommend is if you don't have time to figure that out, go to your favorite <laughs> statistics website and start figuring out who's good. I recommend Hot Slogs because you can look at hero and map statistics. So, Master's Diamond, Plat, four items. I picked the last four weeks so I can get a good sample size. Then I go to Maps and I go Battlefield of Eternity. It's going to refresh and it's going to show us the best heroes for Battlefield of Eternity. I ignore anything that's a popularity of 10% or less because those could just be one trick players who are really good at one hero and know maybe a small trick on how to win with that hero on that map. So you should be looking at everything else. Right now, Thrall is kind of bro broken right now, and he thrives in four-man teams. So in Battlefield of Eternity, while Thrall is not that fast at racing, he's very good at being in the four-man team because of Crash Lightning. Sonya has a high win rate because at the moment, she doesn't lose to anyone in top lane. So in the 1v1, you would win if you got Sonya. In the 4v4, you would win if you got Thrall. Which means you're just going to win both lanes. Um, and this is what you should be looking for. Stukov, he's a very good healer in groups of four. But he kind of falls short in smaller groups. So while his win rate is 56.1% on this map, let's say, for example, you were on a different map. Like, I don't know, um, Dragonshire. If you're on Dragonshire, let's look how low Stukov is. Do we see Stukov? There he is. He's the second lowest healer on Dragonshire. So picking the right healer for the map is just as important as picking the right um, other character for the map. So going back to this, you should be focusing on the map pick. Whoever's strongest on the map. If you're on Infernal Shrines, um, which is a map that's all about clearing the minions very quickly... I always look at Kerrigan as a great option because she can clear the minions quickly. And what do you know? Kerrigan is picked pretty often and she clears and she has a great win rate because she clears those minions so quickly and so safely that she's guaranteed to have a, a really good spot. Sonya is strong as a solo laner. So again, she's going to fit in a lot of different maps. But these are what you should be constantly looking for. Is who's good on the map and why they're good on the map. Some might surprise you, but don't just pick someone because they're good on that map if you don't know why they're good on that map. I told someone that pros kept picking Kerrigan on Tome of the Spider Queen, and they couldn't figure out why Kerrigan was picked on Tome of the Spider Queen. They said, no, she's bad on Tome of the Spider Queen. Well, if you go to Tome of the Spider Queen, Kerrigan's sitting as the fourth highest win rate, with almost a 58% win rate on Tome of the Spider Queen. Now I'm going to tell you the reason why she's so strong in this map. And it's because when you rotate as a group of four on that map, you're constantly passing the enemies over and over and over. With Kerrigan, if you pass an enemy hero that's a squishy hero, like a mage or a healer, you can always pull them in, stun them, and finish them off. So every time you're rotating with Kerrigan, you can get a kill. That's why she's strong on this map. So don't just pick a hero because you don't know why they're played. If you pick Kerrigan and you think that she's meant to be like queuing down like the spiders to get gems, that's all wrong. But if you do know why someone's picked, that is when you should be picking them is within the first two to three picks. All right. Now the next two picks that are very important in the draft are the last two picks. So we're going to make these blue. And the last two picks are just as important as the first two picks. You have two very, very important roles, okay? Your first role is to fill for your team. If your team doesn't have a healer, most likely you're going to lose. And the reason why is because after a short fight, everyone needs to back while the team with the healer can just heal up everyone and go back into the objective or whatever. So if you don't pick a healer and you needed one, that's on you. So these last four picks need to be one, to fill for your team. The second thing you need to focus on is to counter the enemy team. And this is very important, and it can be done in almost any role. I'm going to show you again how to do this by simply using hot slogs again. We've already learned how to look at who to ban. We've looked at how to play for the map. Now I'm going to show you a trick on how to counter. Let's say, for example, they pick Illidan somewhere up here, and you're the last pick, and you need to pick a support. What you're going to do is you're going to go to the search bar, and you're going to type in Illidan. 
You're going to click on Illidan, and then you're going to go to uh, Matchups. You're going to go to Win Percentage, and you're going to click it so you can see the lowest win percentage. Now you realize who counters Illidan, which is Lili. Illidan hops in, you blind Illidan, now he doesn't get self-healing from auto-attacking, as well as it's harder for him to lower his cooldowns, because he's blinded. So, that Illidan is now a dead Illidan. You can go down further and see Arthas and Cassia. Cassia, same thing. Illidan jumps in, he gets blinded, he's dead. Arthas, Illidan jumps in, he gets his auto-attack slowed, he's dead. Do you kind of see the pattern here is you can pick in any role. If you're a tank last pick against an Illidan, pick Arthas. Are you a uh, support last pick? Pick Lili. Are you a damage last pick? Pick Cassia. Do you kind of see the thing that you can do here? And you can do this with any hero. So let's go to Hot Slogs and let's show another hero. And again, you can use any of these statistics sites. There's a few others. I'm just using Hot Slogs to show you the example. You can also use Master League and other ones. But Sonya is really strong right now. So let's say you go to Sonya and you go matchups and they pick a Sonya early. We're going to go win percentage against and show who's very strong against her. Well, Rexar tends to beat her in the solo lane because every time she spins, Rexar can stun her. So Rexar has a pretty high win rate. Some of the other ones are just strong heroes at the time, but Thrall and Maev are pretty good because, again, Thrall is usually in the 4-man, so if Sonya is very strong in the 1v1, that means that there's probably a 4v4 going on, so Thrall's, Thrall has a high chance to beat her even though he's never in the lane that she's in. But you might see people like Arthas back on the list. You might see um, just people that can slow or people that can root. Just anyone that can counter her. Um, and you can do this with any hero. So in these picks, again, you should be focusing on filling for your team. And then you should be focusing on counterpicking the enemy heroes. Which, again, it's practice is the best way to learn this. But if you don't have time to practice, there are tools out there like Hot Slogs that you can use to get the best thing. Finally... You as last pick, you should be looking to synergize with your team. If there's no one on the enemy team that you can visually see is easy to counter, what you should be looking for is to synergize with your team. If you have a Genji on your team, pick Uther. You can combine Genji and Uther and do a Divine Shield combined with a... Um, with a... Uh, uh, Dragon Blade, and you'll have a lot of damage. It's three seconds of hell, I swear. Um, so let's go to Genji for a second. You can do the same thing. You can do duos, which picks people who they commonly win with. Well, with Genji, Malfurion's up there, which makes sense. Malfurion can toss a healing over time on you and then can heal you from afar. Um, I'm actually surprised Uther's not on here because he's commonly picked with uh, Genji. So... Wow. And that could teach you something too. So just because I thought something was really good doesn't mean it's actually good. You can learn some win percentages. Also, there is something to know about this though. Remember that with statistics that numbers, just looking at numbers is meaningless. If people pick Uther with Genji a lot and they don't do the combo, you might actually be just hindering yourself by not getting enough healing to combine with them. So while I'm looking at this and going, yeah, I know Uther Genji is really good, um, just picking them, even though Uther is the worst pick for the map, could be devastating. So remember to pick for the map first, and then pick to counter, and then pick to synergize. And feel free to check percentages. You might be wrong in what you think is the best combo. So, that's essentially how you draft. Focus on the bands first, then you pick for the map, you pick for the, the, uh... The, to counter pick as well as to fill so i forgot just a little piece while we're going and i want to share with this last little piece that i forgot which is this pick right here the center pick in my opinion this is my least favorite pick and the reason why is because it's harder to know what your role is you can't quite pick for the map you can't quite um pick to counter pick because not all the enemies are picked you can't quite fill you know what I mean? It's just in a really weird position. So what you should be focusing on if you're in the middle pick, you're in one of the most valuable picks because you can do a little bit of everything. You can pick either for the map, to fill, or to counter pick. You can pick however you want to in this middle role as long as it works with your team. I personally recommend that the middle pick should be focused mostly on synergizing with your team. If you see um, a Diablo, 
and you want to do an APOC combo with someone where you lock them down, then he apocalypses, and then you end the lockdown, and boom, the apocalypse goes off, you kill everyone, woohoo. You want to try to synergize the most in this third pick. But it's your job to use your own mentality to figure out if you should be working on a um, on a map pick or on a fill pick. And that's where it makes it one of the most difficult things. I hope this explains a little bit about how to draft, when to pick who, what to ban, um, as well as a little bit of statistics research. I mean, just quick research to figure out who who beats who, who matches up well with who, um, as well as who's good on which map. Uh, if you have any other questions about drafting or about... Um, just like the maps in general, feel free to throw your questions below. If you have any extra tips for drafting, feel free to throw those below. Um, if you like these videos, uh, feel free to leave me a comment, subscribe, do whatever. And if you are interested in any other type of videos, just, just let me know. Thank you.